Studies have shown an epidemic of decreasing testosterone over the years in males worldwide. And that is why I'm bringing this video to you. In all seriousness, Alex gave me a video today that just said, deadlifts that will increase your testosterone. So let's see what he compiled for us and uh, we'll jump into it. Here we go. All right, looks like we got Pete Rubish. We all recognize this basement. I love this era of deadlifting where guys like rip the bar off the floor and they kind of almost, they, can, they almost like do like an upright row with it at the top. Let's see if he does it with 495. Hey! It's an RPE six. That's just wild, man. So now he's got the straps. I wonder if it's the same RPE. A little bit tougher. Oh, shit. we got a double. Triple. We got a triple. Let's go. All right. So I actually, I genuinely like the touch and go deadlift. I really, really do. Uh, people tend to shit on it because it's not like competition. Like, you know, it's a deadlift for a reason. The bar should be dead on the floor and you should reset every rep. I don't know. You, you come from a standing posture where you can breathe and brace and then you slowly go through that range of motion. There's something to be said about that. You can really end up working the eccentric portion of a deadlift. Like that's what makes a lot of these guys strong. I would highly, highly suggest doing that kind of eccentric touch and go deadlift. Um, but yeah, you have to know how to deadlift the bar off the floor when it's dead. So mix it up. I just, I would not go one way or the other. Uh, I think a lot of people are, are way too hesitant to do anything touch and go. They'll just start and moaning about, oh, that's like CrossFit. And then I'll just, you know, show him a video of Pete Rubish. Another thing about Pete Rubish, man, he is off gear and he's natural. And, you know, he's obviously a ton weaker. But I think there is a lot to be said about that. I mentioned this uh, in my tier list video. Like, that's so hardcore to go from like absolutely obliterating yourself with drugs and being a phenomenal power lifter to at some point in your life going completely natural not even trt like that takes that's just headstrong behavior right there so now we have kk again way bigger weight 426 okay this had to have been his best all time outrageous Crazy. Now look, quick little PSA, because I, I forgot to mention it earlier. We all know these aren't actual deadlifts, okay? Because the only deadlift comes from right here, okay? If it's not in the elbows, it ain't a deadlift. So I don't know what we're gonna call this, a hands lift, a deadlift with the hands. Comment what we call these. They're certainly not deadlifts. Last day at 23 years old. Eric Lillibridge. Just explode, like, let's see how fast that is. Okay, that's ridiculous. 340. 374 kilos, 825 pounds. That's like an RP8. So 900. Remember KK was at 939. I don't know if, if this is peak Lillibridge or not. with the bloody nose. So, look at the blood start drip, dripping down. 
testosterone! Uh, all right, guys. Was he a geared powerlifter at one point or something? Like, um, you know, the geared powerlifters, they got the wraps, they got the squat suits, they sit back really far, and it looks, you know, kind of ugly. I mean, this is f***ing badass, so... I'm I'm having a little bit of nuance here. Give me a break. But was he one of those guys or did he do a lot of raw? Or did he do both? I feel like this is just my assessment, but I don't know. Were there good power lifters who did both? Who were geared and and raw? Um, but yeah, sick. F***ing sick. Shit. Testosterone through the roof. Let's go. All right, guys, quick little break in the action here. I'm happy to announce my first ever sponsorship official sponsorship uh it's barbell apparel they sent me a bunch of gear about uh, a month ago and i've been training in it i've been hanging out in all of their stuff and i can honestly say it is the highest quality that i would like in my training gear and just my everyday stuff other sponsored athletes are martins lisis nick best nick simmons nate serwinski who's also a youtube weightlifter like myself They've all joined Barbell Apparel because they believe in the quality and the aesthetic of the company. Right now, if you go to barbellapparel.com, everything site-wide is 20% off for the 4th of July sale. My favorite thing by far are the shorts. Uh, I wear them for training. I wear them whenever I can because it is so goddamn hot in Texas. They're known for their casual wear as well and some formal wear. So some of you guys have big legs. Uh, you need a little bit of stretch. They have incredible quality in their jeans and pants. So yeah, I'm excited to have a new sponsor and uh, let's get back into the video. You will not stop. All right, so George Lehman, I put him, I don't know where I put him in the B, t B tier when I did the tier list. But this dude is just f epic, epic deadlift proportions. Look at this. Look at how he's built. Listen to the music, man. He's gonna lift silent. He's gonna lift in the silence. Holy sh! Easy. Up. Oh, we got two. Even easier. That T-bar better be rising, baby. Holy sh! Was that three and a half there? Dan Green, of course. So Dan Green's a sumo puller, and I and and uh, he's doing conventional here on the deficits. So totally the opposite, and I I find that very commendable. So we're looking at a bigger range of motion for those of you guys watching, like and don't understand why he's standing on that. Adds in more range of motion. The bar is closer to the floor. Essentially, he has to pull it farther. And you would call this kind of like an RDL setup. Um, yeah, I mean, this is all low back and, and hips. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, like, how, what's the best exercise to get your back stronger for the deadlift? Do a different deadlift. Do a different variation of the deadlift. Maybe we call that a stiff-legged deadlift off the deficits. So we got Larry here. Uh, I think it said 375 with the reverse bands. I think this is where he starts bleeding out of random orifices. Yeah, look, there's blood coming out of his chest. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, okay. Somebody explain that to me. I know that your blood is really thin and maybe your skin is really thin because of all the androgens 
and yeah that's basically it like your your blood pressure is really high but like if somebody in the comments could like you know maybe put it a little bit more scientific maybe a little bit of bro science there but he's starting to bleed out of random pores in his chest now i'll tell you this uh i have strained really hard on deadlifts and uh i've never bled but i've popped face vessels and i can tell you right now like when you're in that weird place and you're just like i'm not gonna let go of this thing because it's a simple movement. You just don't let go. You just refuse to let go. And if you keep moving millimeter by millimeter, you end up getting this lift. It's really messed up. You probably shouldn't do that. But uh, yeah, I mean, this guy, I, I imagine once you strain like this and it starts happening, it happens a lot easier, happens a lot more. I mean, we saw the Eric Lillibridge clip where he's bleeding out of his nose. This is a similar thing, except it's out of a pore on his chest. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ, Larry. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Alex! Come on! Come on! Yeah, buddy. Are you fing kidding me, dude? <laughs> oh shit, look at it. Wait. Oh god. Yeah, that was the lift in question. I should have let go of it, but I was at Juji's house, and I'm not going to let go of sh at that household. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I hope you utilize your new boosted testosterone, and you get to the f gym, and you go deadlift, and you don't let go of the barbell, and you stop being such a...